there, long time no speak. I've already tried filming this intro several times and I'm very much out of practice, so fingers crossed this goes well. I'm Lily, Lily Kate Makes on Instagram and I'm a knitwear designer based in Lancashire in the northwest of the UK. Um, I have been designing for quite a long time, share mostly on Instagram and I used to share a reasonably regular podcast but have very much fallen out of the habit of it over the last year or so with various other things going on and it just kind of, you know when you don't do something for so long that then it feels like a bit of a big deal to actually do it again. Um, and I've kind of been like, oh, should I do a roundup video? Should I do a podcast? What should I share what I'm working on? Do I need to do some special video? Do I need to make sure I've got a microphone and everything? And I just thought, you know what, get on with it. Get on with it, woman. Pull yourself together. So here we are. Um, if it's a little bit echoey in here, I'm in quite a big room at the moment. I'm house sitting in a lovely house with my friend. I spend quite a bit of time here while they're away, which is very, very nice. And I'm here for a couple of weeks and kind of treating it as like a, a reset, a mental reset. <laughs> so I've barely left the house, which is actually fine by me. It's a lovely house and I've got lots to do, so I'm quite happy, quite content. Um, and after quite a few months of kind of being here, there and everywhere, it's been quite nice to just be in one place and focusing on my design stuff, like solely. Um, so I find your creative brain doesn't work as well when you're like, right, I'm at home on a Wednesday, let's crack on. And then you, by the time you've caught up on emails and whatever pattern writing needs doing and things like this, that then there's not kind of time for the creative side of things to develop. Um, sounds a bit wishy-washy, but I mean, that's just how it is. Um, and yeah, it's been nice to actually stay here and have all my yarn around me. And then just kind of when ideas have come to mind, I've gone and worked on them. Um, and I've been having more and more ideas and getting excited. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm a genius. I've thought of something. Um, and just kind of indulging that as and when, which has been really nice. Am I in focus? I'm going to have to go put my glasses on. They annoy me when I'm filming because of reflections, but I can't tell if I'm in focus. My own eyes are in focus now, so hopefully the camera is too. Um, yeah, so I thought I'd share what I've finished recently, what's on my needles, and make a sort of um, podcasty, vloggy kind of thing over the next few days. I'm not entirely sure, but I thought that's probably better than better to just take the pressure off and see what I come up with so hopefully it'll be something nice. My creative juices are flowing at the moment, I'm very excited so I should hopefully have lots to share. Doing lots of swatching, um, trying out new things, some ideas are working well and some I think oh this is going to look really nice, I'll swatch it and then the fabric has been somewhat underwhelming or not what I expected so yeah kind of going off in different directions, some working better than others but all fun and games and I'm getting a lot of knitting done. I have, I set myself a challenge last Sunday, I think. I made a little reel on Instagram of all my current whips and realized that I just had five sleeves to knit, basically. One of them being this sleeve, is it this one? This one, I can't remember. Um, of the top that I'm wearing, which I didn't do most of the knitting. My mum actually knit this one, knit the sample for me, and then I just had one sleeve and an edging or something to finish. Um, and I really like it. So I don't know if it looks like I'm leaning forward with here, leaning on the countertop. Um, sorry, I need to sit still, it's a bit creaky this chair. So this is actually my Feels Right Tea pattern, which was published in June lockdown, actually, the first lockdown, so a long time ago. Um, and this year I was thinking in early January, whatever Christmas or something, right? Trying to get my brain into summer mode, which always feels weird. Um, and thinking, right, I want a really classic t-shirt. And then I thought, well, the classic t-shirt that I've already done, I don't really want to change anything about it. Like, if I was to do a 2024 t-shirt, I'd be changing things about this purely for the sake of it, so that I could say it was a new pattern, when actually, what I, all the design elements that I want in a t-shirt were already in this. So I kind of thought, what's the point in doing something new just for the sake of it? Um, but my original Feels Right tee in white has a panel across the front in hand dyed yarn. Um, it was some stash yarn that we'd had for ages, me and my mum. And it was pink and green and would have kind of looked weird on its own. But as a panel, I kind of liked, I don't mind the pooling and I, I do actually quite like the blobbiness of it um, when it's just in one panel. And then it had the pink and green around the, the neckband and the cuffs as well. And I still love it, it's one of my most worn items where it's death every summer. Um, 
but I get that it's quite distinctive and it's interesting when my friends tell me these kind of things actually, give me sort of honest feedback. Like one of my friends said she doesn't like that pink and green, she doesn't like the pooling and the blobbiness and it just distracts and puts her off the design. Even though the actual pattern itself, obviously she wouldn't knit it in that yarn so would not have that end result, but the sort of first, first impression really counts. Um, and that's something I've actually learned quite a lot through designing that um, even though knitters, you know, everybody will go and make something their own anyway and do it in their own yarn, their own colour choice and it'll be completely unique. If that sort of first impression is a style that doesn't suit, it can be quite off-putting and I get that. You can, we can do, it can be difficult to visualise what your version will be, even if you know it would be different. So yeah, apparently that was kind of off-putting, so she told me. Nice to have the honest feedback. Didn't like it, therefore didn't like the design. Um, I was like, hmm, fair. I like it, but whatever. Um, <laughs> so I decided to, that a classic plain version would probably be a good idea. So obviously the original then ends up with a kind of sporty vibe, having a good colour around the edges. Um, whereas this version, just completely plain. This is knitting yarn art, baby cotton it's it's a baby type yarn i can't remember um it's a mer not merino a cotton acrylic blend which i actually really like the summer items um i find it super practical it can can be machine washed i think actually i haven't done yet but um should i spill my dinner down here i could it's uh, well within the realms of possibility that that will happen um and yeah the color is not something i've knit with or worn particularly before but I really like it. I kind of thought that I already have a white t-shirt version, um, so I didn't want to do that. Wanted to do a colour, but I already have a few other things planned, a few, <laughs> quite a few, in reddish pinky kind of colours. So went completely in the opposite direction, and I just love this cobalt blue. Um, so I put together a little mood board when I found this yarn, and I was like, right, let's just think how I'm gonna pair, what I'm gonna pair this with and how it's gonna turn out. And I'm actually really liking black and cobalt together. It's a bit of a different combination, but I'm really enjoying it. Um, so maybe I'll insert the new board here. Um, yeah, very happy with it. And I'm going to just make a couple of tiny tweaks to the pattern. Um, nothing that'll actually change the shape of it or anything, just like phrasing, but I think I phrase things better now than I did in 2020. So I'll just make those updates and then add those in. And it feels like a new pattern, even though the bare bones bit is exactly the same. So I'll catch you later when I've done that. I use the Freeform app for my mood boards, which is really handy because you can do all sorts of doodles, notes, everything on there too. They tend to start off as a mood board for me. Like this one was for my piping hot sweater. A little bit of a mood board and then become the place where I put all sorts of sketches, notes, scribbly things that would probably only make sense to me. But yeah, I kind of have this as my starting point. Super handy, free format. like loose and rumply the hair just didn't fall through you know when you actually genuinely just chuck something on and it looks okay it doesn't happen often normally you have to pretend it landed like that but it actually did so I was like oh take a picture don't move don't change anything I don't know cool or weird realize this one hasn't actually been on YouTube before so I should have said this is my overdrive vest was designed late last year, October I think. Um, yeah, nice deep armholes, textured short row, shaping shoulder detail, my favourite kind of thing. Nice little layering piece. Just taken a few pictures of an actual new design. This one is my wishful sweater, which is currently in test knitting. 
Um, I bought the yarn for this in Copenhagen last year. If you've watched my Copenhagen vlog, you'll see I bought it at the Kit Couture shop in last March? Yeah, March last year. Well, a while ago. Um, I didn't have any specific plans for it, I just thought it was super pretty. Um, so this is Kit Couture Below. Really nice below and yarn. So I just wanted to do something really simple. Kind of, I had the overall relaxed vibe of the sweater in my head and this particular shoulder construction. Because I love a saddle shoulder, a nice neat detail around here. Love how the sleeve cap fits. Wanted a set-in sleeve, but in a more relaxed fitting garment, because I think set-in sleeves are often used, or I have used them at least, um, in more fitted garments. And I just, I like the fit of the shoulder, but I wanted it, yeah, in a more relaxed fit. So nice deep armholes, always deep enough armholes for me. Um, one sec. So nice deep armholes, but as you'll see, the sleeves naturally want to go down and kind of hang by your sides um, because I do quite deep sleeve caps as well as armholes. Um, this just means that the garment will kind of naturally hang like this without having loads of excess fabric here, even though it's a deep armhole, there's not particularly loads of excess. If I lift my arms up, then we get all the excess here, but luckily I don't walk around like this all day, so that's not a problem. So it's nice there. That's how you can have a deep armhole without loads of excess fabric on my wishful sweater. Currently been testing it and the pattern will be available on the 8th of March. Unless my testing has happened to finish any quicker, which um, they're racing through. People are knitting this one up really quickly, so if everybody's finished early, then I might release the pattern early. But yeah, It also has a balloon sleeve version included in the pattern which Lauren um, is currently sample knitting a version of for me. The, um, the sleeves were the only change, so I was like, oh, it's probably not the best use of my time to knit another version of that when I can hand that over to Lauren and she'll whiz through it. So I'm excited to see that. I think she's done both sleeves now and it's just on the body, so hopefully she'll be able to send it to me in the post very soon and I'll have that shared in. So I ordered yarn to make a movement tee a summer version of my movement sweater, which is in Aram Way and want to do it in DK Way. Went for San Nascan Duo, following very many recommendations on Insta. There's a nice wool cotton yarn. And I wanted it to be reasonably um, low contrast, like a nice neutral stripe, mostly in the white with little bits of the beigey colour. But now I'm thinking it's kind of too low contrast and it's just going to be boring. Here's the whip I should be working on. Here's what I'm getting distracted by. Um, thinking it might be a little too boring. I don't know whether it'll be subtle in a good way or a dull way. Gonna swatch that to try. But also, this has been kicking about. And I'm thinking, I wonder what that'll look like. Obviously then it wouldn't be like a standard stripe because one's a different texture. And it's supposed to be a really staple basic and maybe I should stick with this, but hmm. Hmm, I'm gonna have a swatch now, even though I should be working on this, but I'm getting distracted by this. Literally throw this card again on all the time. And considering how much wear it's had, it's my calm down card again. It's doing pretty well, I'd say. Finished it about a year ago. Well, I was house sitting here last year, actually. And it's, I mean, I've deep held it a couple of times, but we like the outfit. Just, I think it's done pretty well, considering. This is who I'm here to look after. He'll sometimes tolerate being picked up for a snuggle. Loves a snuggle on his terms. Using my Axis yarn held with Cumulus. I tried some stripes there, wasn't keen. Um, then tried this brioche with double knitting combination, loved that. And then I've decided to kind of run with that and try it as a saddle shoulder. So this is what I'm swatching right now. Kind of tried to do a swatch with a bit of front, bit of the saddle shoulder, the front, the back, the sleeve, and neck all on it. Obviously, it would be bigger than that, but I just do. A small swatch just big enough to kind of sample every technique in one go with my favorite method for curving a neck band around the back of the neck there 
so it curves and lies nice and smooth because I absolutely hate it when neckbands do that and they sit up. Pet peeve. So I'm liking this. I can't decide whether this is on a six millimeter and it's reasonably firm, but not blocked. This is a seven millimeter, but blocked. It's very wafty. Um, but I did want this to be like a summer beachy kind of throw on airy cardigan. So I think I might go with the seven. Not sure, maybe I should block this and think. Because I want to stop. I this long abandoned whip for a little while last night. And I started to sleeve. It grows quite quickly, so I might do a little bit more now. outside and knitting in the sunshine for the first time this year it's a whole 12 degrees so it's you know tropical here in the uk and it's not that windy and it's blue sky so i just thought you know what i'm gonna take my knitting outside i might have to wear two layers to do it but this this jump is actually the perfect thing for it it's my mum's from about 22 years ago something like that she thinks she said she got it when my brother was little and he's now 23 so perfect kind of jumper coat combination to keep me warm there have my new project which i am absolutely loving working on this I, it feels very addictive right now watching it grow i did all the maths last night all the calculations for the yoke um it's a raglan brioche and double knitting combination going on there that i'm really enjoying working on in i can't remember whether i already spoke about this the yarn's tight, I think I'm sat on it. Um, my yarn, Axis by Lily Kate, held together with fiber space Cumulus in the shade Coral. And they look really nice together knit up. Um, I love the kind of marl that you get when you use two yarns that are kind of a, a bad match. You know, they're not quite the same tone and that is what makes it an interesting fabric. So I love how this looks in the sun. Um, yeah, really enjoying working on that. I do still have several sleeves to knit. If you follow me on Instagram lately, you will know that I am not only stuck on Sleeve Island, I'm on Sleeve Archipelago right now. There's a lot of them. Um, I started the week with, on Sunday I had five sleeves to knit. One of them was only a t-shirt short sleeve, so I finished that. I've already shown that, I think. Um, and then I knit all the stocking stitch of my calm down sweater sleeve in a day, and then did the rib the following day. So that was quite a lot of knitting because I'm using 3.75 millimeter needles for that. So quite intense. Um, so then after that, I felt like I wanted some bigger needles. It's so very unlike me to flip between projects, but whilst I'm here um, and just, I feel like I'm being, I'm fully immersing myself in the like new designs being my sole focus right now for a couple of weeks. Um, so I'm kind of letting myself have a few things on the go because my thinking was that most of the fussy bits of a design, most of the thinking, most of the calculations are in this top shoulder section for me. Generally, that's how it goes. So if I kind of get a few designs to that stage and then leave myself with just a load of stocking stitch to plow through, at least I've got through that whilst I'm kind of in the mind frame for it right now. Um, so yeah, allowing myself to have a few projects on the go breaking my usual monogamous knitting um but yeah i do need to finish the other calm down sleeve do need to do that so i think that might be a today job to at least get the sleeve cap done make myself put this down um but yeah really enjoying knitting in the sun I'm gonna go and do a few emails and things now good morning it is now tuesday the 6th of february i haven't checked in properly in a couple of days but i've been doing lots of knitting and a parcel has just arrived which I'm fairly certain is a sample knit that Lauren has worked on for me of my wishful sweater. So I did my first version as I showed the other day. 
this version with the tapered sleeves and then I wanted a balloon sleeve version and I made some slight changes to the neckline as well. I raised the back neck slightly and made it slightly narrower than my original sample. So only a few minor tweaks but kind of enough that it wasn't worth wasn't the best use of my time to knit another version myself when I could be working on something new. So Lauren very kindly sampled knit this one for me. So I thought I'd unbox it, open it, and we can see how it's turned out. So I specifically asked her to leave it like 95% done, so she's not being lazy here. Exciting! Um, I specifically asked her to leave it without the hem done, just in case I needed to add any length. I said leave it unblocked, don't do the weaving your ends on the cuff and leave the hem just in case I need to add a bit to it. It's easier to just knit that, do that half an hour of knitting myself than it is to have to unpick hers and change it. So I was like, it's fine, just send it to me there. So here we go, this is the balloon sleeve version. Yay! Bit of a different colour for me, but... There we go, I think I might add some links. Don't know, because I need to block it. Hmm. Let's try it on. There we go. So unblocked. I think that's probably going to be just about the right awkward length pre-blocking. Hmm. I haven't actually knit with this yarn myself. This is Drops Air, which is a great substitute for the Kit Couture Blow, which I love, but it's not the easiest to get hold of. Um, and this is a more affordable, easily available substitute that many wet hair knitters are using. Excuse the bits of fluff on there. I wore these trousers with a red hoodie the other day. Um, yeah. Love it. I think I might have to add a little bit of length to the sleeves there. Obviously, she's knitted to the length that I said, so that's absolutely fine. Yeah. Do I block it first or do I just take a guess? Because with that one, the first sample, I did the sleeves quite long and then blocked it and it really, really grew. Um, so then I had to go back and shorten them. Hmm. Either way, it's not much knitting. But yeah, just have a think what to do. This is the balloon sleeve version. I'll show you when it's unlocked. Don't do what I did and throw the ball of yarn in the sink. Why did I just do that? Just a quick note as I'm blocking this second sample and thought of something. When you lie it out flat, obviously when it's wet and kind of heavy, it can sort of want to go like this and stretch out across the front section here. So just try and take care when you're blocking. Like if you pull that out, it kind of wants to pull on there. Sorry, this is very random. Just try and make sure that these stitches stay like not too stretched. And then we'll keep that nice line there. I have finally finished it. My extra yarn arrived. Enough for me to knit like two rounds of the cuff that I actually needed it for. Finally finished and it looks suitably lumpy and awkward length and all the things that it should look before blocking. Um, so I'm excited for a very satisfying before and after when this one is blocked because as you'll see at the moment like these rib details covered in fluff, it's been in the project bag with my uh, pale coloured fluffy one. These rib details, this isn't too bad because I did block the shoulders earlier in the project. Here's all like Kind of sitting inwards, not lying right. The fabric looks lumpy. It, I mean, it looks kind of lumpy, and I am a fairly neat knitter, I'd like to think. Um, it's just, you know, that is how it goes. The sleeves are awkward length. Haven't we woven the ends in yet? I wanted to film whilst well, I had a little bit of daylight. And let me tilt up. There we go, that's better. Um, yeah, I always aim for awkward length sleeves pre blocking. Like, I guess you could call them bracelet length, but just kind of stupid looking, um, that's, that's what I aim for, knowing that it will relax because not only will the actual sleeve fabric grow and stretch and relax, but this section will all sort of 
flatten out and even out and generally this seam will shift a little bit further along here. Um, so again giving you a bit of length there. And the body should flow a lot nice, more nicely. Um, this yarn, Dererum Natura Ulysse, is a woolen spun yarn and they do tend to bloom quite a lot with blocking. So yeah, very happy that this is done. Just in time now after the wishful sweater that arrived from Lauren. Hello baby! Um, that's now done blocking so I can replace it in that spot with this one. Oh no, claws! He doesn't normally do that. Oh, right, fine, bye. Um, Phoenix. I'm very happy with that. Finally! Finally it's done. Calm down sweater. Pattern coming soon. I was like, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. If you can knit a sock, you can knit anything. And we're gonna be matchy. I've recruited a new knitter. Oh my goodness. Bama knit it by I myself. Love it. You've got too much hair. Too much hair. Crazy long hair. Do ta da Gonna be matchy. Hopefully it will look like this. I can't yeah. actually believe I knit this myself. There we go. And we're going to be before, after. <laughs> I guess you could say I have a bit of a colour palette going at the moment. Started this this morning and I am loving how it's knitting up. Super quick. Hello from my final day of house sitting. Been here for a couple of weeks now. And I've actually broken the curse of this house where I always leave with less knitting than I came with. I always seem to end up my projects go wrong, designs go wrong. But I have a new design and it worked. I've broken the curse. Woohoo! This doesn't actually have a name as I speak. By the time this video goes up, hopefully it will do. Just a little scarf in a meshy stitch. So it's in an all over. Um, double yarn over meshy stitch. I used Zakama yarns, can't remember what they call the base, but it's some 100% merino that I bought at Yarndale with a little tuck detail down the center and some short rows. I can't really show very well here, but basically short rows to just curve it, kind of set the two halves at an angle to each other so that it sits nicely around your neck, more nicely than it otherwise would. Ah, wafting in the wind, very nicely. So I'm super happy with that. I love how it looks with the red lipstick. It just makes me happy. This spot is really, really annoying. Um, yeah, so final finished object here. So that means I had my calm down sweater finished that I had to knit the sleeves off whilst I was here. The feels right tee that I knit one sleeve off. Lauren sent the um, sample knit of the wishful sweater with the balloon sleeves. So I just did the edging on that. Um, and that's done. So obviously that's not a not a fully me project, but it's something something I'm going home with. Um, a finished item. So thanks to Lauren for knitting that one and a new design and another couple of new designs on the needles. So feeling good. Excited for spring. Blue skies now. I'm just yeah feeling very positive about some upcoming designs. So I wanted to finish this one quickly because I want to wear it at Unravel Festival, which I've decided to go to in. That's not this weekend coming, the weekend after, down south in Farnham. So I'm gonna go stay there for a couple of days, go to Unravel with Lauren actually, who sampled it. So it'd be lovely to catch up with her. Um, and then potentially another fun nitty trip on the horizon, a little bit further afield. When That's not confirmed yet whether that one will go ahead, but yeah. Lots of knitting trips planned for this year, summer designs, feeling good. And I think I'm gonna sign off this video there. So look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you.